Hey friend, welcome. Welcome to my very fancy shipping station. Today it's my bed, <laughs> but it's working out for me. I have everything I need to ship out 12 items today. That's over three days. <sighs> That's not ideal. I would really like to be at 10 items a day, but that has not been the case lately or ever. <laughs> so we're getting there. If you haven't met me, I'm Jen. I'm fairly new at reselling on eBay. I've been doing this for just about 10 months and this is what I sold over the last three days. I have everything ready. These are my notes and I have my phone. I shouldn't, I should put that away. My tape in my tape dispenser, my lint roller. I have a couple black items that I know I will need to lint roll. I have a dog. I have a marker and a pen, my tissue paper, my shipping supply, my poly mailers and stuff. And then this is all the things that I have to ship out. So to start, I have two bras and I actually lotted these up together. These are Victoria's Secret bras and they're very like, they're aligned demi. A lot of the Victoria's Secret bras will have in the tag what the style is actually called. So I put all my bras, if they're padded and wired, in these boxes and they're eight by six by four. I think I got them on eBay. If I didn't get them on eBay, I got them on Amazon. But I did use another YouTuber's like affiliate link, which is always good <laughs> to support another YouTuber if you can. I just put some tissue paper and the bra and I put a little thank you sticker in there and then I just tape it up. These are a pair of vintage Levi shorts. They are 551s and they're women's. So I've actually not found anything like this. I find vintage Levi's often. Yeah, pretty regularly. I like to wrap all my clothes in tissue paper. Some people use plastic and I think that's fine, but I don't really like to contribute to the plastic use of the world. Uh, <laughs> that's just a personal thing and I'm not always great at it but if I can take one little step toward making that a little bit better I'm going to. I'm just going to use a poly mailer that's probably nine by seven ish and I just got these off of Amazon. If something is under a pound it goes first, it can go first class. You can always send it priority, but priority costs more money. I weigh all my items as I'm taking photographs and then I can put that weight directly into the listing so that I know. I buy all my labels first before I, before I do my shipping, which I think is probably a little bit backwards. This is an L.L. Bean flannel roll tab shirt. It is pretty lightweight. It's women's. I have not been telling you <laughs> how much I bought these for and how much they sold for. I will do that. Anyway, I take a picture, I put it in the listing, and then I know, I know how much about my shipping supplies cost if I, or how much they weigh. So if I need to put it in a box, I just know that ahead of time and that works well for me. I also do calculated shipping, which I've heard isn't really the best way to do it, but I've really not had any complaints. There have been a couple times people have messaged me and asked if I can change the shipping. And sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. And I just check usually to make sure So the L.L. Bean sold, I bought it in May at a garage sale and I paid $1.62. The buyer paid $16.90. So after fees and shipping, my profit is $8.34. That's not, it's not ideal. I really want my profit to be closer to 20 and slowly getting there. But the 555s I just bought last week, they sold very fast for 
So I bought those at my favorite thrift store for 42 cents, right? Uh, <laughs> I, after fees and shipping, my profit is $15.63. The Victoria's Secret bras, I only paid $2. I paid a dollar each for them at a yard sale um, within the last month, I think. So they sold fairly quickly for $44.92 after fees and shipping. And um, my cost of goods, of course, I sometimes forget to say that. My net profit is $30.93 for both of those together, which I think is fantastic. Hey, as I'm building this box for later, I wanted to say that I also am going to share my July numbers at the end of this video. So make sure you stick around and let me know in the comments how your July is doing. And if you've liked this video so far, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. That helps my YouTube channel a lot. So the next item is this J. Jill navy blue floral blouse. And it is just kind of basic. It's pretty sheer. It's beautiful, I think. Uh, I bought it at my favorite thrift store. No, I didn't. I bought it at a, another local thrift store for $1 was my cost of goods. And it sold for $21.39 within a week. After fees and shipping and my cost of goods, my profit was $13.38, which is pretty good, you know, within a week. <laughs> I have just a few left of these little smaller eBay branded poly mailers that I got with my coupon that I have from having a store. I did set up a store in January and I feel like it was a good decision for me. It cost the one I have is like $25 a month or something like that. And they just take it out of my payout. So that works out for me. I have a video when I did set that up. So if you want, you can check that out up there later if you're interested. This is a Victoria's Secret pink sweater. It's not pink. It's like a neon orange. And I was just shaking the dog off. Uh... I try to keep the dog away from the clothes, but you know, <laughs> sometimes it's difficult. Uh, anyway, I bought this at a yard sale for 61 cents. That was my average cost of goods. I think there was probably a bag sale or something thrown in like that, but I, the buyer paid $25.15 and my profit is $16.26. You might notice that I write on my packages and I don't put labels on my packages and that is because I don't have a printer set up. I have a printer. It's, um, you know, sitting on my desk, not doing a, any good <laughs> to anyone sitting in there, but I have a really good system with the QR codes that eBay offers and the United States Postal Service offers and my post office ladies are wonderful and I just haven't taken the time to do the printer, to set the printer up. I know that, um, I forgot to show you this. <laughs> this is a vintage wool sweater cardigan. It's pretty cool, but it, the brand is Phil Harris Design. I didn't even put the brand in the listing because it was a it's a nothing brand but just the fact that it was vintage and wool it's it's pretty cool looking I think anyway I was talking about the QR codes sometimes I think it's just more it's more simple to continue doing the thing that you know how to do even though Maybe it'll save time to do the new thing. Does that make sense? Uh, just because, like, it's going to take me time to figure out how to do, how to make the labels, how to set up the printer, how to do the labels. Like, that's all going to take time. And I know, like, once I get it set up and done, it'll probably save me time in the long run, haul, the long run, long haul. Ooh, I combine those, but 
it just feels like too much work right now to try and figure that out. These are just, these big sweaters are kind of hard to shove in here, but I do have larger ones, larger poly mailers, but they're huge. So I think I need to do just a, a smidge step up, just a little bigger than these for sweaters that are under a pound, which doesn't often happen. I feel like most sweaters are over a pound, but I, I don't know. So that sweater I found at a yard sale. I paid $2 for it. The buyer paid $37.60. When I say what they paid, that's what they paid for the item plus the shipping because that's what comes into my account. And then eBay takes care of the taxes. I don't see any of that. I don't have to deal with any of that. But I do have to pay the shipping out of what comes into my account. So after fees, shipping, and cost of goods, my profit is $22.63 which is pretty great. I think these I am going to use my big giant polymiller for because it feels a little daunting to try and put these into the tiny polymiller, but these are champion sweatpants. And I just bought these for I think 46 cents was my cost of goods. 42 cents is what it ended up actually being. I bought these when I went thrifting with my mom and my sister. My mom actually uh, pointed them out to me and said, hey, pick these up. And I had just listed a Nike pair that were very similar for like a decent amount of money. And I know Nike, I don't, I feel like Nike is a better brand than Champion and I could be completely off base about that. But because I had just listed them, and these were new with tags. I went ahead and grabbed them for, you know, 42 cents. And they ended up selling for $31.92. So after fees and shipping, my profit is $22.51. So thanks mom for pointing those out to me. I really enjoy thrifting with my mom and my sister. And I did do a haul. I had like five thrift stores that I went to what was like four thrift stores and a yard sale all in like a weekend. And so I did record that haul last week. And if you haven't had a chance to check it out, I'll post that up here and you can check it out a little bit later. This also was in that haul, pretty sure. And this is a Chico's Travelers shirt. It is very basic and plain. It is um, black, but it's that material. It's like that slinky material that doesn't wrinkle. And it also doesn't seem to attract lint and dog hair, which is lovely. I feel like no matter how hard I try, I always end up with a dog hair somewhere. And I did one time get a bad review about dog hair, so I don't want to do that. Uh, don't want negative feedback because of Layla. Anyway, I bought these for $2 at a local thrift store and they were on clearance. It was on clearance. I wouldn't have paid $4 for this because it didn't sell for very much. It did, I think I said it was half off, right? <laughs> so I paid $2. It sold for $15.85. So my profit is $7.26. It's so funny because when I first started, I was really excited that my profit like my average profit was right around $7. And now like $7 is my lowest profit in all of these 12 items. So I feel like I'm doing better at learning how to source, how to buy things and list things and just learning, just learning along the way. I'm watching a lot of YouTube, I'll be quite honest. And I enjoy watching the what sold uh, videos. The haul videos are kind of fun. But I feel like that doesn't really tell you all the information because people can buy things and then maybe not sell them. These are also Chico's and these are Chico's Zenergy, which is kind of similar in style. I find they're stretchy and just kind of that material that it feels like a, like a, Sport pant, like a, 
I don't know, they're very polyester -y. But, you know, they don't wrinkle very easily and they're just very nice and they would be great. They feel very comfortable. And yeah, these sold also within a week. I've had a lot of things that have sold very quickly. Actually with the 12 items, I think uh, six of them were within the past week, which is really good. Also another indication that I'm sourcing better and things are not just sitting for months and months and months, which is not what I want because I don't have a huge storage area and I don't really want to be storing things. I don't want to have thousands and thousands of things in my eBay store because I have to store that somewhere, you know? So these pants I bought at a local thrift store for $1.75 that had to have been on sale. Yes, that was a half off day. So the buyer paid $23.90 and my profit is $14.56. Hopefully you're doing something along with me and not just watching me, maybe folding a load of laundry, maybe taking some pictures, maybe shipping along with me, that would be fun. Let me know if you're shipping with me. When I am shipping out things that are over a pound, I use the free priority shipping supplies from the United States Postal Service, USPS. And I'm still gonna wrap I have these shoes. I should have told you what they were first. <laughs> I'm still gonna wrap these up in tissue paper. These are bear traps, and I found like five pairs of bear traps in the past month, probably two months maybe. And these are the only ones that have sold. I'm not saying like run out and buy all the bear traps. But I found these at, just at a garage sale. My cost of goods was only 61 cents that day. Same garage sale I got that other thing at. But these, I sold for $28.70 and my profit is $16.11. So that's, I mean, that's fairly decent. Bear traps do have the name in the, on the inside, which is great, I think. These I could put in a Tyvek mailer, but I don't know. I, I have the space to put them in a box, so I'm going to put them in a box, I guess. Anyway, I still wrap them in tissue paper, and I just use for my shoes, as many shoes as I can, I put them in a shoe box, which comes straight from the, United, the USPS, and you can order them online. It doesn't work for me. I usually just ask. I'm there anyway, so I usually just ask if they have some, and they usually will hand me a giant, enormous box of them, which is great. Uh, any of the boxes. So this is a shoe box I use for shoes. Sometimes I've put like dolls or stuffed animals in them as well, but they're all free from the po the post office. With shoes, I mean especially these that are little, they are gonna flop around in here and so I'm gonna use just a grocery bag that I have sitting around my house. I ripped it in half and I just crumple it up and put it in there just to make it so it doesn't, they don't bounce around. I should tell you about my tape because listen, isn't that lovely? It's silent tape. <laughs> I cannot handle the like noise of tape. I just have, I don't know if I have sensory issues or if I'm just sensitive. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I love my silent tape. I also have it in this tape dispenser, which I think is awesome. It has like a smaller tape dispenser for regular tape. And I was hoping that my little thank you notes would fit in there, but they don't. They're too big, which is unfortunate, but I'll live. <laughs> my ideal world didn't quite work out. These are also going to go priority and I am going to send these in a Tyvek mailer. Tyvek mailers I've heard are waterproof. That feels a little sketchy to me. I think they're probably, it's probably water resistant, but I do, I do like that. These are car, um, Carhartt, Carpenter jeans. They're pretty trashed and 
they still sold. I spent a whole three dollars on them at a half off day on at a uh, thrift store in another town that I went specifically because I knew they were having a half off day and I had accidentally gone <laughs> like I had kind of stumbled upon the thrift store um, a few months prior and it was a really good thrift store so now uh, occasionally when I have time I go back and on their half off day go in and see what I can find and I'm looking forward to doing that again because it's really I just it's just really good stuff the two experiences I've had I've had really good experiences there so these sold for $30 and 70 no 67 cents I paid three dollars for them so after fees shipping and my cost of goods my profit is $13 and 88 cents While these Tyvek mailers do have a self-adhesive strip, I feel like it doesn't self-adhese very well. So I am just reinforcing it with another strip of tape, which is totally fine. You're allowed to do that. These are very cool. These are Polo Ralph Lauren, and they have little bulldogs on them, if you can see that, I don't know, but they are a very large size, like a 50 and i was really excited about them i just saw them without seeing the tag and i was like oh those are cool i need to buy those and then when i saw that they were polo ralph lauren i was even more excited and then when i saw the comps i was even more excited uh the sell-through rate was really high and that is something that i am really learning and sometimes i'm just lazy and i don't do it but i think that it's important to really look up the sell-through rate and see how things are selling you know if there's a hundred listed and one sold even if my cost of goods is 42 cents i'm really just paying 42 cents to put that in my storage and hold on to it for until i decide to get rid of it these i bought at my favorite thrift store for 90 cents uh oh sell through rate we were talking about sell through rate i don't remember exactly what the sell through rate was but when I looked it up, it was pretty good. And these did sell within a month. And I mean a short month, um, probably within like three weeks. So these I bought for 90 cents. I think I already said that like three times. They sold for $39.85 after fees and shipping and my cost of goods. My profit is $27.30 on a pair of shorts with dogs on them. <laughs> So that's, you know, that's pretty good. Let's see what my total profit is for three days. Okay, so my total profit for three days was $208.79. And my average profit per item was $17.40. So like I said earlier, I'm trying to push that up towards 20. I'm doing better, obviously. Uh, that's, you know, just over three days and not my entire month. But July is looking much better than June. June kind of tanked. <laughs> My goal is to make about $2,000 in profit so that I can put $1,000 of that into my family's budget. Then if it was exactly 2,000, then 500 would go into savings for taxes because this is taxable income. I don't know that 25% is probably the best. It's probably a little low but I'm new with this and I haven't consulted with a tax professional yet. It's happening soon. But then another $500 per month then would go back into my selling, <laughs> my buying, my buying that would go back into my business for things like inventory and poly mailers and tape and things like that. I think that's it for now. I'm gonna pack all this up and take it to the post office. We're going to head to the beach for the day. And today's the 28th. So we still have three more days. 28, 29, 30, 31. We still have four more days in July. But at the end of those four days, I will come right back here in just a snap for you and let you know how July finished up for me and what my total numbers were. Well, happy August. It is August now. 
So that means all my July numbers are in and done. I shipped out another about 14 items this morning. And so we can talk about July numbers. First of all, I started editing and it was a little chaotic <laughs> that ship with me. I was a little uh, discombobulated a bit. So let me know in the comments if you like that style of kind of what sold and ship with me or if you prefer I go back to the other way I was doing it. I'm just, I'm experimenting, I'm playing, but I would really love to know what is best for you because you're who I'm making this video for. In July, I sold, my gross number was $3,596.78. That is up 41.96% from June, which is great. If you have seen my number videos from before, May was fantastic. June stunk. It was terrible. So while July was not as good as May, it is definitely better, much closer to where I want to be, like almost exactly where I want to be. So in June, my gross was $2,533.71. So much better, much better in July. My average sale price was $24.30. That had gone up significantly in May, dropped again in June, and now it's up 8% from $22.42. So almost $2 more per item, which is great. I sold 148 items in July. That is up 30% from 113 items. So my average profit per item was $13.16. I don't remember what it was in June, but my total profit was $1,947.90. That is up, I don't know the percentage, but it was only $1,380.91 in June. So my goal is $2,000 each month. That way I can put half of that into my family's budget a quarter, about 500, into savings for taxes because this is taxable income, and then a quarter, 25% into back into my business. So that's good. I was really, really close. Um, what actually got put into my account from eBay was $1,774.01. So I didn't actually put $1,000 uh, but $887 into my family's budget and $443.50 into my savings and also into um, back into what I'm buying, purchasing. I did check to see how much I spent on inventory, so things that I'm selling, and it was about $320. So that's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. My cost of goods that each of those items cost me to purchase was $278. So my average cost of goods divided between that $148 is $1.88. That is up, I believe it was only 160 something in June, but I'm getting better at finding more profitable items and being willing to spend a little more money on them. I still like to keep my cost of goods under $2 and that I think will be my goal for a really long time. I live in a very, I shouldn't say a very small town, I live in a small town. And there are quite a few thrift stores but it's just not a very affluent area and so I don't find very many items that are worth a lot of money. And maybe I do and I just don't see them uh, but I'm getting better at spotting them and also you know, going to different areas to source as well. Thank you. I got coffee delivered. My friend Stephanie made that mug. It's beautiful. So most of the items that sold were under ten dollars or under, and it was that was fifty two items. I guess that's not most, like a third. And 17 items were between 10 and $15. 16 items were exactly $15. <laughs> I just, last month I found that there were a lot of $15 was just a common number. And so I was like, I wonder how many actually sold for exactly 15. 
16 items. So then 29 items between $15 and $20, 17 items between seven between 20 and $25, and 23 items that were $25 and up. So I'm I'm pleased with that. I feel like I'm getting better at sourcing and finding things that are worthwhile to sell. Working on comping and being more consistent with that and then also um, looking at sell through rate I think has been really beneficial for me and I'm working really hard at doing being more consistent with that. So I did sell 58 items from garage sales and 28 items from my favorite thrift store. That was my lowest average sales price but it kind of makes sense because most of the things that I buy there, my average cost of goods ends up being around 40 to 50 cents. I've paid as much as like $1.70 per item one time, but as low as like six cents. I'm really not joking. Uh, <laughs> six cents once. Uh, so when I'm sourcing there, I'm not as concerned about things selling for much higher. Uh, so probably a lot of those zero to $10 items came from my favorite thrift store. It would be interesting to take a look at if that is actually the case. But you know, when I am basically getting things for almost nothing, even it feels like free, you know, I, it doesn't, I'm still making a decent profit, even though, you know, I'm only selling it for $10. 18 items came from the bins, the Goodwill outlet where I buy things by the pound and that, you know, I haven't been in a few months so that kind of makes sense. Like it's just my old bins trip. I've only ever been three times, but I wanna go again. We'll see. <laughs> and then 20 items sold from a local thrift store that benefits the mission, the two there's like sister stores and it was 13 from one of them and seven from the other. So I think, you know, I'm, I think I'm getting decent items from, from that, from those stores. I just, they price up quite a bit. So it's hard for me to, you know, we've talked about this. I'm cheap. I, <laughs> I just want my cost of goods to be low. I sold 84 women's items, 29 men's, that's clothing. 11 women's pairs of shoes, seven kids clothes items, and five hats. I did go through and check some of my like, I always buy this brand, I don't always buy, but brands that I pick up a lot. So Chico's, this is really interesting. Let's listen here, ready? Chico's, three items. Levi's, three items. Torrid, three items. Talbot's, three items. J. Jill, Guess, guess, three items. Uh, Lucky Brand, yeah, two items, not three. They ruined it, Lucky Brand <laughs> ruined it for me. Lucky Brand kind of surprised me. I thought there would be more because prior to July, I'd had more sales. Maybe I'm not tracking quite as close as I should be. I do know that there is a YouTuber has a very specific like trends dashboard. And I'm really curious, I might use hers in 2023, just because I think it would be interesting to track brands a little more and track like t-shirts and sweaters and pants, like break it down a little more in depth within the women's and men's categories, as well as vintage, because that does seem to be something that I sell quite a bit of. I actually sold 14 vintage items in July. That's 10% of my sales. And most of those vintage items were in my 25 plus of the average sale price. So, you know, I, I feel like, yeah, I also need to think about Depop. That's a whole nother video. One thing I th thought was interesting, I only sold three items on Poshmark, whereas in June I sold nine items. I have been less consistent with cross posting. I cross post from flip and I don't love it like at all. And so I, yeah, I've been less consistent. And so I think that that has 
brought down my sales. Actually, I can't remember the last time I actually cross posted something. I should go on and at least share my closet, but I don't really understand how Poshmark works very well. And so like when I go on to Poshmark, I don't know how to share directly on Poshmark. Anyway, I'm along the lines of Depop <laughs> wondering about a different cross listing service because I do think, I don't know. I have conflicting thoughts. I have con conflicting thoughts. Okay, I think that is all from my notes. So let's talk a little bit about a few of the sales that I did have that I found interesting in one way or another. Maybe they were, maybe it was a good sale. Maybe it was a bad sale. Maybe it was just interesting. Okay, so here's one. This was interesting because it was a viewer. I actually had a viewer sale. So thank you so much for shopping with me. <laughs> um, I feel awkward, but I'm really, really grateful. And I just wanted to say that. So you know who you are and thank you. Plus these jeans were really cute really cute they were like embroidered and distressed very cute these were a pair of vintage overalls and they sold for $35.97 I don't have the notes of like where I bought all these things but know that you know my average cost of goods was under two dollars so I don't pay much for these items so when someone pays you know $35 this is what they paid for the item the shipping is in addition and it's right underneath on that line so $35 for a pair of overalls I had no idea they were worth that when I when I bought them I just I like to buy overalls they sell a lot for me and you'll see I have a couple more pair in here so I did find this blank NYC uh, jeans jacket at a garage sale and I think I paid like five dollars for it and it sold very fast. I was very happy about that because I was a little stressed about it because the sell through rate wasn't actually that good. And Blank NYC is one of those brands I hear like are a little more high end and I I don't even know what it is. I'm not very fashionable. So, but I did think it was a cute uh, jean jacket. Sold some vintage Levi's and they sold for $20 and 78 cents. And these were just shorts. They kind of, I don't know, kind of remind me of something my dad would wear. Uh, and more vintage Levi's, but these, I mean, check this out, $50 for a pair of jeans. These were 501s. They were made in the USA, which is super helpful with vintage, I find. But $50, that's pretty great. Here's another pair of overalls, and these are vintage Disney. I did find these at a yard sale for $1, $1, that was it, and I had no idea what they were, <laughs> none. I looked them up and I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me, and I think I listed them at like almost $70, but somebody offered me $50, and I was like, you can have them for $50. These are Victoria's Secret Dream Angels. They were not even the same type, like one was a plunge and one was a push-up bra, but they were the same size, and so I lotted them together and sold them for $30, and I, I think that's pretty great. I did find a whole bunch of Victoria's Secret bras at a yard sale. I think at the same yard sale that I bought the blank NYC jacket, and they had them priced at like $2 a piece, and I asked if she would take a dollar for them, and at first she said no, and I was like, okay, and I was starting to put them back, and she was like, okay, I'll take a dollar, and I was like, great. And I think they've all sold. Here's another example of lotting things up that has worked in my favor. These are Carhartt scrub pants. They were all the same size and they were not perfect. They just looked used. Does that make sense? There wasn't anything particularly wrong with them. I think one of them did have a stain, but most of them, they were okay. They just looked used. And I don't think I realized it when I got them. I think Carhartt is one of those. Actually, I meant to look up Carhartt, see how many Carhartt items I sold. I actually sold six Carhartt items. That's pretty good. One was a pair of suspenders. They were pretty cool. Squirrel moment there. Sorry about that. All right. So these I lotted up and sold for, you know, $30 total, which is great. 
This is a vintage blazer and that sold for $35. This I found at the bins the last time I went. We were, my daughter was with me and she was over it. And I was like, let me go down one more aisle. And I thought, you know what? I really would like to find something that is benef like make this worth it, right? <laughs> and this is what I found. It was an Ines Crafts uh, cardigan and it was beautiful. Made in Ireland, I think. So it was really pretty. It did have a hole in it, but it sold for $39.97. These giant flare jeans, I mean the flare was huge on these can can jeans and they sold for $32. I think I had them listed for like $40. Oh, this was super fun. I found these vintage Gitano, G Gitano? <laughs> I went in strong, but now I'm, now I'm doubting myself. I think it's Gitano. But these vintage jeans, I found two pair of them in two different sizes, but these were green. And so this note from the buyer says, hi there, we'd love to use this for a film shooting in New Orleans right now. So they asked me to ship it really quick. And I did, I went, I just grabbed that item and went that day. I usually only ship twice a week and this was, I had to go out of my way, but I did it and got them in real fast. I actually, I think that they were right on the cusp of being, they were under a pound, but I went ahead and shipped them um, priority just to get it there. I mean, they paid $19.97 outright. So I was really, <laughs> somewhere there's a film with my jeans on them. Another pair of overalls. These are J. Crew, and they were reimagined, so they were like fair trade. I don't know. I thought that was pretty cool, but they sold for almost thirty dollars. Okay, this is Ishakti. Ish I don't know this brand at all. I would not have known this brand had I not seen it on a YouTube video, and it was the Hustle at Home Mom, and she always finds like crazy high end stuff. And so I saw it, like I saw her video, she mentioned this brand and it stuck in my head because it's kind of an odd sounding brand. And so I found it at a yard sale and was like, yes, I was super excited about it. And then I got home and I was like, it's not really worth that much. I thought it was gonna be like a $60 dress or something, but it sold for $20, so. That's not terrible. Uh, actually, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that, but I just was expecting it to be a little higher end than it actually is, or the resale value was more. These Keens were my daughter's, and I we buy Keens on eBay all the time, and so when I she said she didn't want these, I was like, well, I'm certainly gonna sell them because I know I buy them for 30 to $40 on eBay, and these, uh, like rainbow strappy ones were actually comping quite a bit higher than other ones that it was just a more unique style I guess and these had sign pretty significant wear so I did take an offer actually take an offer a lot so these Tevas I paid up for at a thrift store that mission thrift store uh, that I talk about and I think in the store okay sometimes when I comp in the store it's really good and then I get home and I do the comps again and it's different. And I don't know why that is, but I'm not the only person that I've heard say that. So I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is, but it's a thing, it's a thing. This was like an, I don't know, like for posture or something and they paid $30 for it. So I only spent, that came from my favorite thrift store. So I think my cost of goods was around 40 cents. Here's another example of lotting things together. I found these Puma sports bras at my favorite thrift store and there were five of them and I was like, they were, I mean, they looked perfect. They were, looked almost brand new. So I lotted them together. Puma, I don't think is a great reselling brand, but it's not terrible either. So I thought, you know, they've got, what's that, $6? per sports bra that's a really good deal and I made a pretty decent profit because I when I did my average cost of goods I just did them as one item so I spent you know less than a dollar for all five of those this balloon jacket wow it was it's pretty special <laughs> isn't that awesome 
but $25, I just, I don't, I don't know why I'm attracted to these things, but, and I buy them, but I find them at decent prices and they, they sell for me. This polo jacket I found at Goodwill for $5. It was actually, I believe it's men's, but it was in the women's section and it was only priced at a dollar. It was new with tags. It did have a TJ Maxx, like clearance tag on it and I cut that off. So I just had the polo thing on it. There were none sold and but they were all listed between like 70 and $100. Retail price on it was like $198. So I ended up, I was happy with $50. That's a really great return on my $5 investment. And I probably even had 10% off because I bought it at Goodwill and I usually get a 10% off at Goodwill. So it's a vintage from probably from the 80s Wrangler Western like pearl snap jean shirt, jean denim shirt, <laughs> and it sold for $25.97. I actually had two of them. I found them and like a bunch of vintage Levi's at a garage sale early on. And I think I probably left some behind and I probably should have gotten more because this was the second one that sold. Here is an interesting sale that is a very low sale. And why it's interesting to me is it's Madewell. <laughs> and I was so excited to find Madewell. And I just, it's, you know, it's just not a brand that I often find. And it's a name I hear a lot, like Free People and Madewell. And what's the other one that I feel like is common? within resellers, but I don't find it commonly. So when I found the Madewell shirt, I was like, yes, this is gonna be great. It sold for $5 and I've had it for quite a few months. I think I found it at my favorite thrift store, so I didn't pay much for it, but I think I ended up, you know, my profit was like $2 or something on that, which is not ideal. And had I paid up for it at, and when I say pay up, I mean, like if I had paid the $4 and 50 cents or whatever at a Goodwill, I would have lost money. So comping is important. This is just an example of how I am not always good at things. Uh, one thing that I'm working on is my photography. My photography skills just in general are not great. And this is an example. If you see at the top, it says buyer wants to return the item. It's $26. That's significant. It was this vintage uh, cardigan. Well, the the return said the stripe in there, the lighter stripe looks white in the picture and it, it does. And apparently it is actually pink. And so that's why they want to return it. It kind of makes me wonder, like it's a woman's sweater. So I don't know if they just didn't like it that way. I mean, okay, it's my fault, but it makes me wonder if they just had some buyer's remorse and didn't want to pay the return shipping and so they put it as you know not as not as described not as described item not as described yes so anyway fail right <laughs> it was a fail these are new balance minimus barefoot shoes and they do have a vibram sole they I bought them, I spent quite a bit of money on them, but the not on these. <laughs> I bought, I think a purple pair. I buy this brand of shoes for my daughters. And so when I saw it, I knew, again, similar to the Keens, I know that they sell between, you know, 30 and $40. These, I actually bought a purple pair at the thrift store. And when I brought them home, my daughter was like, I like those better than mine. So she traded them out. <laughs> so these are the ones that she was wearing and now she's wearing the purple ones. So I did pay like uh, probably about $6 for these and the buyer paid $28.97. That's, that's good. These were super cool and had they been an adult size, I think I could have gotten about $40 for them, but $22 for some vintage uh, Abercrombie and Fitch jeans. They have like a lace up fly uh they're very cool i'm hoping i don't get a return on them because they are kids i'm hoping that the person actually looked and noticed that they were kids and not adults i've had that happen before it's kind of a bummer so those were the sales that i thought were interesting i hope you found them interesting too if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to leave me a like thanks so much for joining me don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already 
I make videos every Wednesday about reselling, so you can check another one out right here over my face, and I will see you soon.